Hello and welcome to the channel. In a previous video we've seen how to create a digital clock or timer in Excel using VBA macros and in this video we will create a classic analog clock using the same principle but in this case we're gonna have some shapes and we're gonna move the shapes to create the classic analog uh, clock in Excel. So let's close here and move to a new workbook and I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is to add the frame of the clock and that's going to be an oval shape, but it needs to be a perfect circle. So I'm going to do that with Excel VBA. So let's go to the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module and this one will be add circle or let me rephrase that add clock frame something like this and we're gonna simply add to sheet one shapes add shape and here we're gonna have MSO MSO shape oval and we could specify the the exact position and dimension but I'm just gonna do it relative to the selected range so selection left selection top selection width and note here that the height the height parameter now we are going to enter the height parameter is also going to be the selection width so it will be a perfect circle now let's run it oops and i forgot to select something so so let me select we're going to have the clock for example let's say one two three four five six here okay and whatever we select is going to have the same width and the same height so let's run that again and here we have it um, i'm going to collapse that okay yeah and of course now you can design and you can um you can change the color, you can design it as you want. Uh, I think I'm going to have it orange as I had the other one. And now you can add any other components like, um, for example, let's add here some lines and make it bigger, black, and make it thicker. And we can copy paste this one and put it down here another one here is going to be black let's also make it thicker and this one we can also copy it's not perfectly um, now it seems to be okay well anyway um, I'm doing this manually, we could also do it with Excel VBA, but that would make this video much longer. So, And you can add all the other lines, you can add the numbers um, also, insert in a text box, and so on. Okay, now we're going to copy the, the circle, and I'm going to just paste it here, and we're going to work with that because here's where we're going to add the arrows of the clock. So first of all, this is going to be transparent. I'm just going to leave the outline so that we see where it is. And now we're going to add the line for, this is going to be for hours. So let's go to the center. And here you need to be, well, to have a good eye to somewhere here. I think that's going to be the, the line for the hour. And let me make it, maybe let, let's make, let's have this color, let's make it thicker. So I'm going to go here and get the maximum weight. So this is going to be the hour. So I'm going to, now, I'm going to group these two things. And I'm going to call it here, you see, it says group 15, but I'm going to call it hour. Because this is going to be our um, our arrow. Okay, more or less somewhere there you can adjust it. And again, we could use macros to have it perfect, perfectly fit. 
Now we're going to copy now what we just did and paste it here. And this one is going to be for the minutes. So we simply ungroup it now. We select only the um, the arrow or the line and we make it a bit longer and we make it a bit thinner. Okay, now we group it again and we bring it here. And I'm using the keyboard arrows to make it fit better. And we change the name of the group to minute. And I guess you know what we're doing now. Yes, I'm copy pasting that again. And we're going to do the same for seconds. So again, I'm going to un ungroup this. I'm going to get only the line and I will make it longer and I will make it thinner, let's say something like that. Now we group it again and we're going to change the name here for second. So there we have our um, arrows. And now we go to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to add another module. So the first one was just for the layout. And actually, we only have one macro or one procedure here, but we could do many other things with macros. We could, we could improve the layout using some other macros. But, um, so, but now this, in this other module that I'm going to call clock, we're going to have some macros here. The first one will be set clock. So we're going to set the time in this clock. And the time is, let's say, time now equals now. Um, and in VVA, this is declared as a date. And then we're going to have the hour now equals hour of time now, minute now. The minute, so we're gonna get the the hour and the second now, the minute and the second of the current time. Okay. So now in my clock here is seven around 7:30 p.m. So if we put this uh, each of these variables in a message box, so the hour now is gonna be 19 or 7 p.m. The minute now in my clock here is exactly 34. So yeah, 34, there we go. And the seconds, whatever, whatever it is, yeah? Now we are gonna rotate the arrows here or, or the lines that we have added. We're gonna rotate them depending on the time, right? And they can rotate 360 degrees. So for hours, we're gonna say our rotation, so our rot stands for our rotation, is going to be the hour now times 360 divided by 12 hours. Now for minutes, the minute rotation, so that's the variable I chose to, to use, it's going to be the minute now times 6. And 6, that means 360 divided by 60. So 360 degrees, right, by 60 minutes. Um, now, there is a small problem with that for hours. So we need to adjust to make sure that the arrow for hours also moves between one hour and the next, right? If it's 1.30, we want to have the arrow somewhere in the middle between one and two. And to do that, we need to make a correction to what I just did. And that's going to be dependent on the minute. So we're going to have the minute decimal value, which is going to be the minute now times 100 
divided 60. So we're going to get somehow the percent of minutes to add to the hour. So now here, if we say the hour decimal is going to be the hour now plus the minute decimal divided by 100. And this is going to give us a decimal number, a floating number. So we need to declare it as, a, and let me put it here, both the minute decimal is a single and also the hour decimal, oops, decimal, declare as a single. Um, we didn't declare the other variables, but well, all of this will be an integer. So now here, instead of our now, we are going to use our decimal. So let me just put that here. For minutes, it's going to be the same. And, and we have to do the same for seconds. But before we do that, now let's, let's actually move the clock arrows or the lines to match the current time. So that will be sheet one, shapes. And we're going to have here the hour. So remember that we... We change the name of that group to our, so we are selecting that particular shape, which it was a group of a circle with the line or the arrow for hours. And we're going to change the rotation of that object or of that um, circle and the arrow. Everything is going to rotate, but we will only notice the line rotating, so the line indicating the current hour. And this is going to be here our rot, or our rotation, whatever value we get from here. Now the same, we're going to do the same for, um, for the minute. And again, remember we call that shape or that group uh, minute. And we're going to change the rotation to minute rotation. So let's see how that looks for now. Um, again, now we're going to have the time. And the time in my clock here is now 7.42 PM. We're going to split and get 7 in this variable and 30, uh, 42 in this other variable. And then we're going to make this calculation to have a um, floating number. Um, instead of 7, it's going to be 7.7 .7 or 7.8, yeah, depending on the minutes. And then we will calculate how many degrees we need to rotate the line using this formula. So let me run this and now go back. As you see, we have we have moved the hour. Yeah, the hour is somewhere uh, around yeah 7:30, but we didn't move the minute. Why was that? And if you see, if I select that, you see what happened is everything has rotated now. The minute didn't rotate. So why is that? The, the name is correct. The name is minute. So I believe I missed something here. And yes, I see there's a mistake here. I wrote minute row instead of minute rot. So if I run the macro now and we go back, um, we see is around 7.45 almost. Yeah, it's 7.44 in my, in my clock. Now, this doesn't fit very well, but you can fix that adding a small shape here. And it looks better now, right? Now we're going to do the same for seconds. So seconds is actually going to be exactly the same as with minutes. So let me copy paste that and replace. Instead of minute, we're going to have second rotation is going to be second now times six and six is the result of 360 degrees divided by 60, 60 seconds in one minute and then we're going to have here i'm also copy pasting because it's going to be the same we're just going to have to change here second and instead of minute rotation second rotations if i run the macro now you see we have um, now the, the, the seconds have also moved at this very moment, but what we want is a live clock, right? 
So to do that, we're going to use the onTime function or onTime method of the application object. And we covered that in the previous video, so I'm not going to explain that again. We will use a time increment variable, which is going to be now plus a time value of one second, zero one here. And then we say application on time, time increment, comma, we're going to call another macro that I will name uh, move clock. And down here, we have move clock. And move clock is just going to call again set clock. And this is all going to happen after one second. Or we can also say call set clock. And this is going to repeat and repeat and every one second is going to update the clock. So if I run the macro now, you see our clock is working. So this is the time right now, and the seconds are moving. It's not it's not fully aligned um, as you see, but you can yeah you can play with that to make it look nicer, and you can of course add additional uh, components to the to the clock. So. And that's how we create a classic analog clock in Excel using VVA macros. Thanks for watching.